Cheers, guys. Hey. Cheers, everybody. Right. Here you go. Right. Cancer Nights. There you are. All right. All right. Episode, is this episode eight or nine? This is uh, Nueve in Spanish. What do you think? That's good. It's excellent. Thank you. Yeah, I've, I've noticed the bottle and I've been thinking about it, but I haven't pulled the trigger just if you yet. Run so. out. We're locked in here with plenty of alcohol. So, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, totally pre-recorded from Prairie Village, Kansas. <laughs> this is Kansas City Night. Yeah, I'm, I'm Brian Rice. <laughs> I'm Shannon Giver. And today our guest is John Michaels. He has. Uh, Extensive, he has an extensive history as a musician in Kansas City. He's played in uh, Perpetual Change at one point. He's had his own solo work that he's done. He's uh, been part of his daughter Marianne's uh, backing band. And now currently, he is has just launched a Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Yeah, treat. we have. Right. Yes. So please welcome John. How are you hey. doing? Man? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Right. Thank right. you. Yeah, great. Right. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Yeah. Having me. Yeah. So. Delighted. Our pleasure. Mm-hmm. Had to, for so, sure. You had seven episodes to get out of the way, and there was like Just to, 28 to other right. people you called, and they couldn't show up, so <laughs> oh, let's get Michaels. Oh, yeah, we've been working at this one to, to interview you. I mean, uh, we both went and saw your um, first Bruce Springsteen Yes, show. at the Aztec Theater. At the yeah. Aztec, and uh, that was really, it was a great time. And what's the name of your band again? I, I'm sorry. It's, it's uh, Thunder Road. Thunder Road. A, a, we, we've taken tribute out of the name, okay. and I don't know why, just that was suggested, yeah. but it's Thunder Road, the music of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. So That's it's great. not a true tribute where you're a Bruce Springsteen impersonator per se. No, we're a tribute. Okay. We just yeah. wanted, somebody yeah. said, take it out of the name because everybody's a tribute. And I said, oh, whatever. So it's the music of. Sure. Yeah. The music of tends to suggest ah. that you're just playing the music, but you're not nec- that you're not dressing up as them. But we are. But you are. So yeah. it is. You, you know, uh, you guys are, but you're not getting in your own way about it. Um, I think you sing the the songs really well, and you know, uh, but you're not going over the top trying to sound like Bruce Springsteen. It, it, I can't. I mean, the, yeah, the reality yeah. of it is, is if I can get eighty percent of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've listened since I was a teenager. And I've predominantly listened, as a lot of uh, Springsteen fans do, to the live versions. Like, grew up on that mm-hmm. 75 to 85 three record compilation. Uh-huh. Right. And so when I sing the songs, if I go back and listen to the records, I'm like, oh, that's the phrasing. I've never sang it like that, you know, because he does things different okay. live. So I have a very, li- I learned the songs live. In fact, as a band, we made a, a, a point. Because in, in, there are a lot of tribute bands in Kansas City. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's great. And there's a lot, there's a lot of great ones, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but what we did that I think is a little different is we learned, okay, we're going to learn Dancing in the Dark. Great. Let's do the 2009 Hyde Park arrangement. Nice. We pull it down. Yeah. We learn it. There's, there's slightly different things in the arrangement. The Thunder Road. Okay, let's go to the No Nukes concert. Let's pull that one down. Yes. It's a little mm-hmm. faster. It's got some things in it. Um, so so when you hear it, there's not a song in the set, and there's 22 songs, soon to be 28, that we have taken them from the record. We find a live version of it. And That's the way like to do that. it. That's the way to do I it, I like man. that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I... Uh, I I, you knew that I've been taking drum lessons from Go Go Ray. Absolutely. And uh, if you're so, going to take them, that's the guy. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. I just don't I practice enough to really, you know, get to a point where I can get in front of people. But you just he, told your teacher on camera and he's going to see us that you just don't practice. <laughs> oh, he knows. Okay. He knows. Good. Yeah. He's compete, you know, I'm sure he's you know, he, he humors you. me. He humors <laughs> me. But we, we have a song list that sometimes if we go through exercises and other times we just do nothing but songs. And one of the songs is Ordinary World by Duran Duran. And I insist on doing the 2005 Live in London version of it when all five of the original members we're in it because the drum arrangement that Roger Taylor's doing is different than the studio tracks. So I know yeah. exactly what you're talking about. It's just, you know, it's a little thing. Yeah. So, um, cause you want people to come out, 
if you show up and you're a casual Springsteen fan, you'd be like, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But if you show up and there, there was a few, quite a few of them there at the show, you show up and you're a Bruce Springsteen fan and you've been to multiple yes. shows. There's a young lady, uh, her Shelby is her first name and she follows us on Facebook. And if you look her up, she's rabid in a great way for Springsteen. And she's been in the front row and in the pit and all this. And, uh, you know, she's, she's the person that's going to notice those things. Mm-hmm. And that's why you do it, yeah. you know, for yeah. your own self, but you want somebody to show that the real fans can be like, oh, you know, they did that. They added that measure in Thunder Road or they did that. And even if they're not musical, they're just like, oh, that, you know, I paid 15 bucks instead of a thousand. And um, <laughs> yeah, right. And, you know, and, and it was and really a, damn close. You got a band that's, that's giving it their all. I mean, you guys sounded great. Thank you. Um, yeah. Well, I, you know, first of all, what made you choose Bruce Springsteen to be the, the tribute? So started this about three years ago in my head. And when tribute started to become a thing mm-hmm. and a good friend of mine in Nashville put together a Tom Petty tribute band that tours up and down the coast. And it's never been the intention, but I thought, man, I really want to do something and something that I could, you know, do well or, or get, you know, at least in the ballpark. And, um, started thinking about Mellencamp and Brian Adams. That's the stuff mm. I, I grew up listening yeah. to yeah. and then got into Bruce and then quickly thought, you know, this is a great idea. And then thought, Oh, I'm going to put together a seven piece band. And if you've ever tried to, you know, the guys that the zeros do it right. Hey, we got three guys and we know when they're showing up. And as long as we get Larry in the house, we're good. (laughs) And, um, you know, I should have put together a police tribute band, but trying to organize rehearsal and available dates for seven guys is hard. But the, the piece of the puzzle, you know, I wanted to do it because I thought great catalog, you know, wide open, you know, 500 songs. You can all, you can switch things around all the time. You're not tributing to someone who's got eight number ones. You're just, mm-hmm. yeah. And it, it, what, what held it up forever was Clarence and finding the right guy. And to play saxophone, to play sax and yeah. not only play the parts, but play the part and be Clarence. Mm-hmm. And it's a hard spot to fill because the guys that are good, they gig all the time. And the guy we have gigs all the time, Houston Smith. And he was referred to me. I mean, I went down the rabbit hole. I was calling UMKC and talking to the instructors and who, and I got this text from a guy I said, man, this is your guy. And I reached out to Houston and the phone conversation was great. He's, he's, he's a wonderful human being, which, you know, aside that is important. You talk to any of these folks in bands in Kansas city and beyond, if you're going to play music and especially music you really like, you want to do it because there's a lot of time and effort and you want to be in a room with people you like. And Houston just, he checked every box and I'll never forget the conversation we're talking. And I said, Hey, just weird, weird question here, man, but how tall are you? And he said, well, I'm six foot two, six foot three. I said, Oh, thank you. Because I can't have Kevin Hart, you know, as the as the big man. I said, I'm five ten, five eleven, and uh, I'm like, that was the last question. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm tall. So it was, uh, he he walked in the door, and we were like, this is the guy. Yeah, that's good. That's great. That's great. And he, he does a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember. I remember you've been talking about it. Yeah, you said three years. I I remember toward the beginning, and you see, you talked about. You had all the pieces, but you were just trying to find the right saxophone player, yeah. the right Clarence, and that that took that felt like that took a long time until you finally came along and said, "Hey, I'm doing a little." Because the Aztec was your first official show, right? But you did a little four song spot at Jerry's Bait Shop on Jam Night last summer. Yes, that was the first actual thing, and you know, um, and so. And then from there, it was another several months until you did the thing last month. And the thing about Jerry's was that was our first rehearsal. We had not played together. I said, guys, we're going to do four songs. Just show up and get close. We guys are musicians. No problem. Yeah, we're musicians. I mean, speak the rest of them. Yeah. Um, let's uh, just kind of go through the the member who's in your your band. So again, starting with starting with Clarence um, Houston Smith. Kansas City musician, just a, a trained guy. I mean, highly skilled, travels quite a bit. I mean, he's the guy that I've got to pay attention to where he's going to be. When he'll, you know, fly to Boston for a weekend and play. And, um, uh-huh. Dang. Just again, great guy, amazing to hang out with, and a phenomenal player. Um, starting with the rhythm section on bass, uh, Wade Buchanan, 
the Reverend. Uh, the Reverend Wade is a again. He's is, played. Is he a real Reverend, or is it just his sort of nickname? Brian, you don't get to know all that. I mean, that's that's for the next episode. No, he's. Uh, we just nicknamed him the Reverend, and he's just one of the greatest people I've ever played music with. He's been in Marianne's band for a while and played a lot of shows with mm-hmm. her. And uh, we transitioned him in, and you know, he has again everything's so underrated in this in this music catalog and what Gary Talent does on bass is not just a bunch of root notes following the kick drum there's there's melodic bass lines and there's thing and, and Wade's a guy that dug in and and pays attention and shows up and, and knows what he's doing and again a wonderful human uh, to be in the room with and be on stage with uh, the drums came late and we started with Ray Santo who's a longtime Kansas City guy and I think Ray at one point just looked at me. He's like, God, I didn't know you're going to want to, you know, rehearse this much and do this much. And he goes, it's just a lot. And he, he, he bowed out and, um, and he was killing it. He did the show at Jerry's with us. Yeah. And then, um, then I, I'm talking to Andrew and I'm like, Andrew, you're not doing anything but fixing people's teeth. This was and, Andrew Moore. Uh, and Andrew Moore. Oh, the, uh, will change. Dr. Uh-huh. Andrew Moore. Uh, I said, Andrew, you're not doing anything. He goes, well, my kids are running track all across America. And, I'm like, and they are. He's in that phase. And mm-hmm. uh, he goes, I can't. He goes, but there's this guy that worked at Explorers, and now he works at Payland. And he actually kind of looks like a young Max Weinberg. He's got the glasses and everything. <laughs> and uh, he's a phenomenal drummer. So I reach out to Max or Sam and Sam is like, he's in a couple of punk bands and he's got that real, you know, he's a Ramones guy and a vinyl guy. And, um, and he shows up to the first rehearsal and he's got all the details down. He's got all the fills, all the nuances of the live tracks. And he's, it's like, holy Did shit. his homework I mean, on he's that. He's on it, yeah. Great, And great. he's got an appreciation for the old school Max Weinberg and understands it. And just really brought a, a fire to it. Um, over on keys, uh, on the on the organ and synth side uh, in Glockenspiel is Austin Quick. Austin, um, long story short, I got him his first gig ever. I put him in my cover band when he was like 16. Uh, to play at Barley's and play 80s tunes. He grew up uh, in the same school as my kids went to. Uh, amazing bass player and keyboard player. Um, he's in a band called Carswell and Hope. Uh, Nick Carswell. And they just, and they uh, um, play the Irish Festival. Oh, yeah. At, yeah. The, the mixtape. Yeah. And, oh, okay. and I so great, yeah. I had a great conversation with Austin yeah. at the, after the end of your show because a couple of years ago they had me come in and film the mixtape. Uh, okay. Concert yeah. session, which was two hours and about thirteen or fourteen songs, and what they do with the mixtape at the Irish Fest is there's a backing band of which Austin mm-hmm. is uh, on bass, and they get all the performers that perform throughout the weekend to get up and play a cover of a famous <clears throat> Irish band, and they kind of expanded it to anybody that's almost tenuously <laughs> connected to sure, Ireland, sure. you know, mm-hmm. like yeah. uh, you know. Um, a, a local um, musician named Ashley Davis played or performed Lady in Red. Okay. Because the original singer, I think, somehow was connected to All Ireland right. or UK or something like that. And among the song, of course, there's U2. They go to U2. They'll do the Coors. They'll do For sure. Cranberries. Name name a famous. You know, it's a great. We yeah, caught and part I of filmed it. This it year. And, I, and I got to uh, and I told them I sent them the link to all the because it was a multi cam kind of thing. I had I, I had a stationary camera. Patrick was had his uh, gimbal and a camera, and then oh, I had Patrick my camera where Patrick. I'm where I'm floating. Yeah. I'm floating and roaming around getting shots. So I cut all that together to a board mix that you know. You know, but yeah, so it was good to be able to share that because I, yeah, cool. I don't think they did anything with it. So I was like, hey, look at this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, Nick's, that, that's a great band and, and Austin was on it. Um, then on guitar, uh, brought Rocco in. And, I, um, I met Rocco for the first time, by the way. <laughs> you go to Jerry's? How's that the first time you met uh, yeah. Rocco? Uh, well, I don't go to Jerry's. Okay. All right. So, <laughs> so. so Rocco... <laughs> Uh, known him for a long time. See him at you know jams around town. Mm-hmm. Just a great guy, and he's probably the one who's taken the biggest leap from what he's his he is stylistically and how he plays and what he's into. Um, you know, he's into rock. He's into. Uh, hammering it and you know little steven is mm-hmm. not that it's an ac30 sure. for the gear guys out yeah. there and okay. uh the gear heads and it's chimey and it's almost you know it, so it's funny i'd be like rocco 
quit playing, you know, got to play those top end strings. Rocco, pick behind the bridge pickup. Hey, that sounds real brittle. I know. <laughs> That's trust me when it all comes together. Mm-hmm. And he's taken that leap of faith and really changed the way he, the way he approaches guitar and dove into it. I mean, you know, the head wrap and the scarf and the whole deal and yeah, really, really sure. taking it on. You got to, you and, have to do that one. Cause how would you not want to be, I mean, mm-hmm. little Steven, uh, mm-hmm. there's so, there's so much great character there Man. and Rocco has had to get into, I mean, that's a guy that's had to do. I think out of yeah. all the other members of a Bruce being besides Clarence, He's the one that has to have yeah. the most, yeah. you know. Right. I right. mean, because uh, look at, I mean, uh, oh, what'd you do for your costume, John, to dress like Bruce Springsteen? I put on a pearl snap button shirt and some jeans. <laughs> it's a great look. And, and the Telecaster That's I've had for 25 look. years. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, for me, it's easy because I've heard it so much. I've listened for so long that it was simple to just start doing yeah. it. Yeah. And, and Rocco's done a, a phenomenal job and he's growing um, as a musician just you know, expanding to this. And then, um, you know, we started, we started with Brent Hode on piano. Who's a, just a long time Kansas mm-hmm. city stud. Yeah, formerly of the elders, okay. formerly right. the elders, yeah. um, yeah. you know, just rock and roll bands, the secrets, everything. Brent, Brent's up this long story history. And, you know, after that gig, Brent, uh, you know, kind of in the same way said, Hey, you know, this is awesome. This is cool. But weekly rehearsals and all these gigs and potential sure. it's, you know, I'm at a different season and I would, he, so he has kind of stepped out. And, uh, so right now we are hunting for that piano player and, um, you know, the good ones are out there and yeah. the good ones are gigging. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. for the, we've got a show May 17th at the, uh, lemonade park, lemonade park right. And, uh, Austin's going to do a lot of this, you know, a lot of, he's so he's going to take it on yeah. by himself. With two, yeah. Two pieces. And the cool thing is the pay doesn't change. Mm-hmm. Okay. He gets paid the <laughs> same to do two. <laughs> right. Sure. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I did think I, when I saw you guys, I was like, Oh my God, there's, there's two, you know, there's sure. a piano player and a keyboard player. I mean, that that's impressive. Uh, I love the setup of that. And there's, um, you know, the other drive on this thing, so if I missed, I, I, I think you I'm going everybody. around the thing, yeah, Bass, that's everybody drums, in the band. Yeah. That's everybody. Right. They covered everybody um, and, you know, in the band, so, so there's, there's hey, no I'll, tracks. I'll, I'll try to recommend, think of who I know that may be available to do piano, because you know, I know, you know. But but you're right. They're probably gigging on too, on too much of a yeah, regular they're, basis. Yeah, they're playing, to, and um, you know, there's this is not a never a shot because um, that's not my style. Um, you know, because Mary Ann's band, you know, we use tracks, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. We mm-hmm. two guitar players, drummer, mm-hmm. bass player, and our keyboard player, Mac, over here on the side. And uh, the keys are all on, on a Mac. And, and oh, it's, it's uh, easy, I get it. Easy, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm not a musician. Steve, so. Steve Jobs on synth. <laughs> there you go. We oh, gotta, yeah. We got to work on that. Right. My bad. Timing. My bad on So, that. but in this band, we were really, really... Um, you know, we're not going to use tracks. It's going to be a hundred percent live band. There's no click. Sure. It's there's just, no click. No period. We're just playing. Wow. Uh, that was cause that's what Bruce does. I mean, okay. I, I do know that, that max, there's a click just to get tempos to start the songs. But mm-hmm. once they're off and running, it's, it's there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we, you know, I've watched the videos back. We, we rushed a few things and that was on me cause I get excited and scream one, two, three, four. And, uh, you know, we play, we play born to run at 400 miles an hour. And, um, and, but you know, we'll figure that out, yeah. but it, it felt good. And you know. yeah, you know, just talking about you, um, and what you were wearing, I mean, with the great thing about Bruce Springsteen is it's decades and it's different looks, so many different looks and you have so many to choose from, but you went with the classic, what he wears nowadays, you know, I just the black shirt and the jeans and it's a, he looks great in it, you know, um, I even bought the red, uh, Doc Martens. Okay. So he's wearing, he's wearing the Oxblood Red Doc Martens. Okay. And I bought those for stage. Nice. So. <laughs> All right. I even re-pierced. I had the same two on the left and one on the right holes back mm-hmm. in the 90s, and I punched them back through. <laughs> oh. now, as, now, as far <laughs> as, you know, being being the music of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, you did play a solo with Bruce Springsteen, um, Tunnel, oh, no, 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 um, um, brilliant disguise yeah. acoustically. Right. Do you plan on adding any extra Bruce, like tunnel of love, yes. um, human touch? Yes. Yeah. We'd love to do like lucky town and, yeah. um, uh, light a day, light a day. Yeah. Which was the song that he wrote for Joan Jett 
and the Blackhearts mm-hmm. and uh, Michael yeah. J. Fox right, for that track. It's yeah. a great, it's a it's a yeah, kick ass song. We, you know, we're gonna throw in the De- the oh. Detroit medley that he does live. It's like a ten minute medley of Detroit, mm-hmm. you know, um, just Motown type tracks. And um, so yeah, yeah, it's it's open. I mean, you know, we do, it's hard. I mean, for for the upcoming show, we've added six songs, so we're at twenty eight. Mm-hmm. So that's a two and a half hour, two hour, there forty minute straight right. show, no Just, break. I was about to ask. Uh, breaks are for breaks are for now. No, <laughs> I'm not going to say it. Don't take breaks. <laughs> um, you know, Bosley taught me that, and he's like, "Man, you take a break, you lose the dance floor." I'm like. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, but my, then again, you have bar owner, but you know, lemonade parks are different, but I think the philosophy is the break time is to get people to buy more drinks during the break. Cause yeah. they're too busy dancing. If you're playing, then you mm. take that break. Mm. My and daughter, they, you know, my daughter plays, uh, she'll do like 10 roof for three hours and we don't break kids, millennials, bro. She won't break. And, um, yeah, they only, they don't let you break a tin roof. No. Yeah, and I give her two songs. She walks off, and we do Van Halen, or we do something. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, but I just, in you know, I'm I'm over the hill, right? I'm over fifty now, and you know. It, but you got to we work out, stay in shape. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's four sure. days a week in the gym. Hey, uh, that's, that's what I've Bruce lost I've doing. lost twenty five pounds Good for you. <laughs> over the past Great. four years, okay. and you have to be in shape to go out. And, she, yeah, yeah, totally. So, what what is uh, I mean, you chose Bruce. What does he mean to you? I mean, you know, through all these years. You know, it's, um, you know, Bruce, so 80s kid, born in 72. Mm -hmm. So an MTV kid. And, you know, the Born in the USA record was the one that that hit you first because that's where he had a lot of presence on MTV. And and Bruce was huge and became a fan. Uh, My sister went to that Born in the USA show at Kemper. Uh, I didn't get to go. Good for her. But at the time... She's she's a year or two older than me. Um, at the time, you know, I'd seen Ario, I'd seen The Cars, I'd seen Cheap Trick. I, you know, I was going to these shows when I was 11, 12 years old. So I was getting into rock and roll and I got into Bruce. And then it, it kind of went along. And then in high school, um, a guy that I hung out with, and um, sadly, he, he actually passed away um, a few months back. But he was a Bruce fan, like huge and it was passed down. He had, he was the baby of you know older brothers and sisters, and his older brothers and sisters got him into Bruce. So that's when you know senior year in high school, um, the year I, the freshman year when I was enrolled in college, but wasn't really going. Um, you know we would drive. <laughs> your, your sister told me a story in, relating to that one time. Oh yeah, we know your sister, Stacy. Uh, by the way, yeah. Stacy. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I remember the story. The comment on my. Facebook post where I said, Oh, I love that song, Stacy's Mom. And you're like, Yeah, I used to play that. My sister's name's Stacy, and it was always weird. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Fountains of Wayne, great band. Worst song on the whole record, but that's a great, great band. Um, so, yeah, we used to drive around and listen to Spray Scene all the time. And we had a disc man, which, which was go. really High cool. Tech. And you can yeah. set it on your center console, and you, there's a eighth inch plug that went to something looked like a cassette and you put the cassette in your cassette player and you could play the CD through your cassette. It happened. Trust I rem- I'm no, not no, that no, old. I know, you're no, the I know same exactly, age as me. Don't act like you don't. What, I know exactly what you're talking about. I'm, 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 remem- I'm remembering, I'm remembering yeah. because I, I've seen it. I know He's exactly what you're talking about. And you'd hit a bump and it would skip. But we would listen to that 75 to 85 and we'd listen to the river and we'd listen to the monologue Man. and we'd listen to no surrender acoustic <laughs> and yeah. um so it was really cool and you know long story short you know his name was John too and, and John and I after um I got married and, and started having kids and and for some reason we just drifted and I don't know if it was it was bad or good or whatever but we just didn't hang out and we didn't talk and um you know he passed away and it got me thinking. It's like, why didn't we, you know, why didn't I make a phone call? Why didn't I go hang out? Why didn't I do what? And, you know, it happens. And, um, but so, I mean, there's a lot of those memories with these songs. And you what know. you said is very, you, you touched on how you used to not just listen to like the songs, but also the monologues. And it's like, yeah, you just took it all in. And I feel like that's something that may be lost on the current generation. Do they really sit down and really immerse themselves? I've talked to people 
you know, uh, Eason Pritchard, I think you may have, oh, I know yeah, I know. you know, he would talk about like, you would just sit there and listen to the album and like read the liner notes mm-hmm. and read the lyrics mm-hmm. and you just immerse yeah. yourself into the entire album. And that's not something that's done today. And I feel, you know, obviously oh, it's a get off my lawn kind of moment here, but, but at the same time, I feel like the people that don't do that today, it's their loss. Cause I feel like that's something that was connected you with yeah. Sure. Yeah. that, that we, I think our gener- I think part of the reason that 80s cover bands are still so popular to this day is because we have that communal experience that mm, kind of sort of with the 90s it was still there but modern music after 2000 doesn't have that same draw and but think about it, all the popular bands tend to be 80s based yeah, yeah. you yeah. know 40 years later <laughs> and it's why i mean because you know i remember you're 10, 11 years old my buddy's dad takes us to see Aria Speedwagon and Cheap Trick okay mm-hmm. and you walk down get there early and I'm already playing guitar and into guitar and walk down and Gary Richrath's guitar tech's there and like hey man yeah. can I have a pick and he and he hands us all a Gary Richrath pick that's I've, cool I've got it upstairs that's in cool drawer, yeah. right yeah. and and that was the thing and now I don't think anybody these you know I mean are the are the the chain smokers going to throw a pick at you or something. I don't know what the kids <laughs> listen to uh, showing my age, but, but it's just, it was just different. Mm-hmm. And you know, a few months later I get the call and he's like, Hey man, my dad, we're, we're going to go see Van Halen. And it's, you know, the 1984 tour yep. and you know, hot for teacher. Mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Tickets are $19. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, that's so expensive. I, back but, then. but I said, is your dad taking us? And he says, no, Tony's dad's going to take, or Tony's older brother's going to take it. And Tony's older brother, Pat, is an awesome guy. His name's Pat Cash, and he owns a kick-ass restaurant over in Edwardsville called The Glass Cat with his wife. And Pat was a rebel rouser, man. Pat was the guy, right? Yeah. And I went to my mom, and I said, hey, they got tickets to Van Halen. Can I go? She goes, yeah, you can go to Van Halen. Is is Ian's dad taking you? And I, I locked up. I should have lied, but I said, um, I said, no, no, um, no, Pat's going to take his mom goes, no, no, you're not. You need to go with an adult, you know, pass it on an adult. So I said, mom, it's Van Halen. And she cursed him. She said, these bands come back every two or three years. You can see them next time. Never came back with, uh, never came back with David Lee Roth. Yeah. Right. Kathy Michaels broke up Van Halen. Dang it. (laughs) Dang it. Well, Hey, we want to take a quick pause here. I mean, for okay. a refill? Yeah, that's fine. All right. Okay. Okay, yeah. And now we're back. What were we uh, talking okay. about? No, we're back. Talking about Aria Speed. Well, uh, we, no, we hit, a, we hit a stopping point with the Van Halen story about yeah, how, right. you, okay. how you missed, you know, but oh, so yeah, the, you'll, you'll, they'll come back in two years. And instead it was the yeah. Red Rocker that so you saw. So we're talking about yeah. concerts. How many times have you seen Bruce Springsteen? Seen Bruce twice. Okay. So, um... Saw him, you know, the E Street Band didn't put it back together till yeah. 0, 09, 03, mm-hmm. something like that. Sure. Something. That was yeah. somewhere yeah. there. Yeah. Or, or no, 99 or 03, mm-hmm. they, and they came back around and went over and saw him at Kemper. That was that first tour with the band. And uh, then saw the, saw the River Show. And I've been, you know, the 12, the last one, right. either been traveling or out of town or just not worked out. Yeah. And, um, so, but you know, yeah, I only seen him twice. I, well, so. Wasn't it the Kansas City show that he lost a band member, right? Like the afternoon before. Do you remember yes. that story? Do you remember? Yeah. Is yeah. that the last one, right? Someone. Uh, I don't know if it was the last. It wasn't. It wasn't the last one. It wasn't the 2012. It, it had to be before that. But I remember, um, like, it was the day of the mm-hmm. concert, and then they made this announcement that they were canceling the show, and that one of his band members had passed. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. Clarence, I think. No. It might have yeah. been Federici, yeah. the, the organ player. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, like in his hotel room or something, right? Yeah. Have you ever seen him, Brian? Nope. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I tell you what, he'll get you. He'll get you <laughs> right by the heartstrings, bro. <laughs> you know, it's a guy who now is in his 70s mm-hmm. and plays three hour shows. Yeah. And it's just, Kills and it's it. nonstop. It's yeah. one Lays after the other. Out. Lays it out there. And we, tra- you know, that's another thing about our shows. Like, we, we were like, okay, first five songs. You know, trash can ending, one, two, three, four, boom, and we're going to hit. You know, you just <laughs> go from song to song to song. And and a friend of mine who's not a Springsteen fan was like, came up to me and goes, man, there was no air. You, you, you should 
maybe pause and I'm like, that's not no. what happens. That's right. not, it's a right. constant right. barrage of, right. of music. So. My opinion, you're a Bruce Springsteen fan or you're not. Yeah. He said, he was like, I like, I really like the show. I was surprised that you just kept going. I'm like, well, that's, that's kind of the way that's what yeah. he does. That's what he does. You know, I, we're all on borrowed time. Right. But it's like him, Ozzy, Paul, uh, uh, Paul McCartney, you know, when they pass mm-hmm. away, I'm going to fucking cry my eyes out. You know I mean? It's going to be devastating. You know, uh, but there's a lot of time for that to happen. So when are we going to do a podcast on Beatles versus Beach Boys? So that we Whoa, really hey. people, so. I don't know. I don't know about that. I, so, I do have to say that this is the best Irish whiskey. I enjoy it. <laughs> Definitely. I don't know. It's it's very uh, unique. I'm kind of just mm. spending a lot of time with the yeah. as they call it with the nose. Mm. With the nose. The yeah. nose. Um, the nose quick, is very unique. I do want it. I did wear my Bruce Springsteen 2012. Uh, tour shirt just for this deal so there you go that's pretty strong boom that's pretty strong in there. there we go oh. bruce i cried that's when they did santa Hold claus on. is get, coming get, to town let's get a quick photo uh, and that, with and I, my... I lost it man i was like oh my god let's get let's get a proper photo just in case um there you go boom john you want to get in a get in a quick there you go. <laughs> can you photoshop me i'm yeah, kidding yeah, we'll just do that. it's all good man no All right, we're good. No worries. We're good. So, so yeah, I mean, but, but uh, we we spent so far the the uh, the interview here has been about the Bruce thing. Uh, when did you actually pick up and start learning to play guitar? And is that the only instrument you play? Do you do anything? I when mean, did you discover that you could sing? I mean, is there like does your family because your daughter sings fantastic? So it's obviously. Yeah. If, do you have anybody else in your family that sings and? You know, no, you just sort of discover that you can sing and um, you just got into it. I mean, it is my belief that everyone can sing. It's a muscle and you have to develop it and you have to learn how to. Mm-hmm. Um, is your tone listenable? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, mm-hmm. but everybody can control their pitch and can do it. So, um, no, my parents weren't musical. They're not musical. Um, you know, my, my wife is uh, she started taking some piano lessons a few years ago just to get into it, but she'd never really done, you know, music. Mm-hmm. Um, my son is in radio. Uh, he's the midday producer on 810 Radio, mm-hmm. does a sports show with mm-hmm. some guys from 10 yeah. to 2. Um, but he's not musical. Mm-hmm. Uh, he doesn't play an instrument. He doesn't sing. Um, you know, Mary Ann just started doing it. We started doing it as, you know, when she was a kid. I mean, we'd sit there with an acoustic guitar, and she could sing Living on a Prayer front to back, when she was four years old, she understood it. Um, she did not know her ABCs, but she could sing. She could sing <laughs> "Living on a Prayer," and um, there you go. Education is important, but she, um, you know, she was a soccer player. She was, you know, starting JV goalie at Aquinas High School, which is a big soccer school. She had a couple concussions through soccer and basketball. Wow! And she was in choir. She's all these things. We always, you know, did stuff. And she came to me and said, "Hey, Dad." let's just start a band and we'll start writing songs. And we wrote some songs and you, you know, you and Don did a, did a video for her mm-hmm. and she was 16 years old and she was playing uh, power and light. We started going to Tennessee and writing with some guys down there that I'd known. Um, yeah, you know, I had a country band back in the late nineties and we had a development deal on Sony, wrote a couple songs, had one cut, wrote several songs, but had one cut on RCA. Um, so I still, all these friends of mine that are really, really good at it and can do it for a living are still doing it, you know? And so she wrote a song on her last release, you know, she put a single out called, uh, wish you had, and that song was written with, by a guy with her, with a guy named Fred Wilhelm. And Fred has had top tens with Carrie Underwood. He said faith, um, the rascal flats. He had their last number one hit. Um, you know, Fred's a, like a wow writer and it's some amazing things. And I've known him. I wrote with Fred back in 2001. I was like, Hey, you know, would you take some time and to write with my daughter? And he put her on the schedule and wrote a song and I think it turned out really cool. So we went to Tennessee and cut it. Um, but that's, you know, it, it, you know, mom supports it. Brother supports it. Mm-hmm. And we just kind of do it. And it's, I'm real fortunate because, um, you know, to get to go, I always joke, it's like she's going to look stage left at some point and go, 
damn, my guitar player's too old, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna get fired. But for now, I'm, I'm just trying not to get fired. So. so, and you know, you have to forgive me. I I I know very little about you. So, yeah, yeah. So you're in a band with your daughter. Mm-hmm. What's the name of the band? Oh, it's her deal. It's Marianne Michaels. Marianne Michaels. So she's got original okay. stuff. I, if I you... photographed her senior photos nine years ago. Okay. Yeah, and she's <laughs> she's going back to grad school now to be a uh, to be a therapist. Like, good for her. Right? So I get my daughter sitting there telling me what's wrong with me. So. <laughs> oh, well, you know, obviously you guys did a great job of parenting then because. Oh. Thank you. She sounds like she's very smart and very successful. So that's We're proud of both good of them. Way, yeah, to mm-hmm. Way to go. Way to go on that. It's funny. She was the one trying to get on radio. Now she's going back to get her master's and her brother's the one on radio every day. So. <laughs> Is that Cody and... Uh, what, no, that's uh, that's uh, Jason Anderson in the zone on 810 okay, radio. Okay, okay. And Dylan right. Michaels. and uh, So he's in there. Nice. Does he Good get to him. speak on, he does. on the air and Yeah, stuff? Okay. you know, he's he's the producer, so he's running everything, but he chimes in. And, and Dylan's a kid that, you know, he played college baseball as a pitcher. Um 6'3", 200-pound guy. You know, my dad's tall. My grandpa was tall. My mom's 5'2". She got me. And um, he's he's a baseball guy by trade, but if you want to sit down and talk sports, sit down and talk NFL and go back to the 80s and the 90s and talk about the... I, I remember you know, the story. I think you either posted or you told me directly, but it was the uh, 2015 uh, American uh, uh, League uh, um, Championship Series and the Toronto player, mm-hmm. when 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 Batista. Uh, when Lorenzo Cain scored that tying run, or no, no, they, they, yeah, they from took first the to third, from, from first, first to home, right. from Sorry. first to home, yeah. And Hostile the hitters. the right the right fielder for Toronto, instead of throwing it to first, who could have cut off Kane, he threw it the second. second. And you were with your next to Dylan, your son, and your and you said that your son was like, like even though it's the opposite team. He still saw that he made the wrong throw. Yeah, it's the like, wrong play. Idiot. What are you doing? And and Dylan was telling me he's like, you know, uh, they talked about this is that they know that Batista will will throw to the wrong bag, and that's why they sent Kane. And if you go back and you watch that video and you watch it from that angle, they're sending Kane because of the scouting report on Batista. And he threw that. What do you mean they are sending Kane? Didn't he get to first base on his own? No, though? he was on first when the ball was hit. Right, right. And so Kane's going first to third on the hit, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But they know that Batista will come up throwing and has a tendency to not come to the cutoff guy. He'll go to second okay. to keep the guy from going to second. Mm-hmm. So knowing that and knowing the scouting report on Batista, they were sending they were sending Kane the whole time. Okay, okay. And if you watch that, you can see he's got the go sign and Batista's got the ball in his hand because they know he's going to second. <laughs> and that happened. Dylan and I were actually it's you funny. Were right, you're, it's we were right. right we were right over him. We were right on the on the on the, the rail, and you know, our kids grew up in Kansas City with Kansas City sports, and you know what the Chiefs were, and you know what the Royals yeah. were for kids growing up. And Marla and I refused to ever let them go out and buy a, you know, a such and such jersey from another team, or become a Red Sox fan, or become a you know jumbling. Mm-hmm. It's like no no no, right. you're gonna be a Royals fan, yeah. you're gonna be a Chiefs fan, and someday I promise you. It's going to matter. Yeah. And in 14, Dylan was in Western Nebraska playing baseball. So he did not get to come home for any of that stuff. And then in 15, he was in Independence playing. He was throwing down there. And he got he was home for that. And I just bought tickets. I'm like, dude, I told you. And so you got to go to that game. That was the game. They had the rain delay. Davis yeah, yeah, sure. comes back Wade out. Davis, and it puts right. in the Super, puts in the Super Wade Bowl. Wade Davis, it was, uh, sorry, you know, they, they were line, worried but... about whether he'd still be warm. And uh, there's yeah. a lot about yeah. the baseball, that, about that aspect that I learned on the fly. Like, well, what's the big deal? Why didn't he just come back out? Where if a relief pitcher, if he starts and that cuts off, then he could just lose his Your edge. muscles get cold. Well, your muscles get cold. Think yeah. about it. I mean, you get but, warmed up and you don't stay warm. And Yeah, and, and um, the, but he was like on a, I don't know, was he on like a machine, like a elliptical trainer or like I a was bicycle? In, I was in right field. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But but that's what I read. That's what I read out. Yeah, but you're right. They gotta they back, gotta stay they're back and they're they're inside yeah. the whatever and he's keeping warmed up. Well, so. it, was, it was a great time. It was a magical That's year. why yeah. that's why I don't take breaks. There you go. That's why I, I just keep playing for two and a half. I don't take breaks. I got to stay hot. There right? you go. <laughs> so to bring it back around. Right. Right. Good job. No, that's, but that's part of this. that's what that's what I like about these podcasts is we get off topic and it's pretty cool to get into yeah. stuff, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, you know, do we let's talk about let's let's go through the band. What was the first band you were in? 
Oh man, first band was uh, was kind of. I mean, we didn't have a band. It was me and Randy Robertson, and he had a Kramer Striker, and I had a Mako Telecaster from Japan, <laughs> and we plugged our guitars in in his, into our amps in his room, and uh, we plugged our microphone into his brother Mike's stereo. And I guarantee you, we popped a couple cones out of those speakers. But we were sitting there, and we were playing like Ario. And we had this grand idea about we were going to have a band. And uh, we didn't have a band ever. And um, But Randy and I were the first guys jamming. And Randy's a baseball coach and a, and a school teacher now. And he's a good dude. And um, we were just rocking out. And I think we were like in the eighth grade, right? And then get into high school. And I was really lucky. I went to Bishop Ward High School in KCK. Oh, hey, my, my uh, mom and, uh, graduated from Bishop right, Ward. Well, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay. And, um, we, uh, we had a stage band that was run by a guy named Dennis Horde. He was the teacher. And Dennis was, he's still around. He's, he's cool. His, uh, his grandson uh, is, is named Horde, and he plays in Noe's band. And Eli's band's fantastic. Yeah, Noe Palmer. And, and yeah, sure. So, mm-hmm. um, man, his, his first name's like escaping me now, and I feel bad because I can see his face, but he's a phenomenal guitar player here in Kansas City. Um, but his grandfather, Dennis, was our band teacher. And Catholic High School, in our band, we had bass player, drummer, guitarist, piano player, horn section. And it would be like, okay, we're going to play Bitch by the Rolling Stones. And he would chart it out, and we're playing the rhythm section. We're playing rock and roll, and the horn section's playing. And you bring in a, 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 hey, you know, Billy Idol cut Money Money. Can we do Money Money? I don't know. The kids might yell bad things. Oh, they won't, Mr. Horde. (laughs) And we played it at the the Friday night basketball game, and Mm -hmm. the kids yelled bad things. Um, (laughs) Right. But uh, So we were playing rock and roll every day in stage band. Now, what point do you start singing? You were playing guitar. Yeah, yeah, I got into the, you know, I was in, this is a, it's a horrible story too. We I, we had a Christmas play at our grade school, and I think I was in the fifth grade, and I got this part, and they said there's a solo, but you don't have to sing it. I'm like, no, no, I'll sing it. So I sang this solo in the Christmas play, and my dad had a video camera with with no was, training prior to that. You just did it. Well, no, you're just singing. Mm-hmm. So. My dad had a video camera, and back then it was one that you held on your shoulder. Oh yeah, I and he the had time. the he had the rack of floodlights, and and the the VCR was cut into two pieces, <laughs> and he had the one around him. So my dad comes and he videos this thing, and so my mother has on video heard John singing a song in the Christmas play. And about three months later, on Saturday night on MTV, the Scorpions Worldwide Live Tour is, ca- is broadcast it's live important. on MTV, important and stuff. I want to videotape it. Mm-hmm. I want to record it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I taped over my solo with the Scorpions. Yourself. So my so. mother did not enjoy watching Rocky like a hurricane instead of her John singing, <laughs> singing a Christmas song. It, it, Kathy, right? Is it my mom, Kathy? Kathy yeah. was yep. not happy. About Kathy was that. not happy about John. Uh, why? So. But that's a real story. So been there. Been go into high school, we, we, get into choir, and again, Dennis Horde runs the choir. Okay. So we're doing Beach Boys tunes. We're doing fifties and sixties. Wow. Uh, we did yeah. Greece as a school play. So you were doing. Dang. You know, I always, I always kind of joke that when I left high school, I lost like a regular gig because every day I got to plug in my guitar into an amp and play with a band, and that was great training. And Dennis, sure. I, I, you know. He has, I'm sure he has some type of idea, but he can't have any idea of the type of impact he had on kids playing. I mean, the kid who was playing drums, I, I moved to, a, here's the deal. Dennis left Ward to go to Aquinas when they opened up the new school. Okay. And I transferred schools. I said, and well, followed I, him. Oh, yeah, yeah, I followed him. Hey, okay. Um, and so we go out there, and there's a kid playing drums in the band, a kid named Anthony Magliano, Tony Magliano. If you know... Um, uh, what's the M- oh, uh, Quixotic? Quixotic is that Fusion. the same guy? Yeah. Oh, okay. He was my wow. and so Tony and I started a band fresh uh, sophomore junior year in high school, and so Tony and I started playing. We started playing some high school dances, um, playing you know stuff we shouldn't have been playing in high school dances. Playing the Colt, you know whatever. <laughs> hey, here's Little Devil. Um, hope, uh-huh. hope that works with you and your girl. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, we couldn't get this. we couldn't get dates to the dance, so we went mm-hmm. and played and got paid. But there um, you go. we Thanks did that. Fun. And then got out of high school, uh, joined a band with a guy named Scott Colson and, and Steve Snyder from West. We were playing covers, doing things, trying to write originals. Um, I get out of high school and I'm down at City Spark Studios and I'm recording some demos. I'd written some songs and I'm down there recording and 
Mike and Andrew walk in and they were coming down to, I think they were just coming down to buy some tape uh, for their home studio. And we just started talking and they said, you know, Hey, Bill moved to LA, which is awesome. Bill went out and did outhouse with the guys and phenomenal band. Um, And they said, you know, we've called a lot of people in town and they've said no. And so you will do. Um, so it's it's like, whether you like it or not, <laughs> you're okay. And so I went over to the house and we started playing, we started recording and it was fun. And it mm-hmm. was just, you know, we used to practice in Andrew's mom's basement and it, you know, Andrew's parents are just, again, some of the nicest people you ever meet. And we'd go over there and we'd play in this room and play songs and go out and play, play the shadow, you know, down in West. Oh, ah, the shadow. Here I, we go I talk hear about lots of stories. Of, is it again. Pogo's? We did. Yeah, we, I, so, too. you know, I didn't do Pogo. I think I did one Pogo show. Not like, like hear, the, um, the original Perpetual Change with their selling 45s and, <laughs> and playing Pogos. And, you know, I think they were on Tiger Beat. Yeah, because yeah, that's. Um, they were with Tiger I, Beat. I <laughs> they should have been in Tiger Beat. They were no, good looking young that's men. That's sort of a little, so, known, a little yeah. known fact is that uh, you played. I don't know how brief a time it was, but you were a member of Perpetual Change. Yeah, we were in the, There's a video. Um, there's uh, a prayer video. for vain. Yeah, Speaking that we shot. Of, uh, um, let me yeah. call up the. We, we you don't have to. <laughs> um, kidding. Yeah, we did that track and we shot a video and we went and spent some time in L.A. And you know the reality of it was is we were an '80s pop band, and you go out to sure. the West Coast and it's like, why is everybody wearing flannel? It's warm mm-hmm. here, and yeah. we got caught. Um, we got caught in that. And, and I mean, in, in, in the evidence is that Bill realized it. I mean, Bill, when he went out, because you see what's happening in Los Angeles before it ever gets to Kansas City. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Back then, and, sure. Okay, so we're talking about circa 91, 92. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When yeah. you're recording Prayer for Rain. Mm-hmm. and Shooting a video and uh, Hartnett's playing keys. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's a good time and uh, playing some really fun shows. Um, but yeah. So, huh. came to an end, and nice. he's like, "I'm going to be a dentist." I'm like, "Okay, well, well. <laughs> Doctor Andrew, you know, Mark. I'm going to get married." So yeah. I went, and, yeah. you know, well, yeah. Bosley uh, shared. All, all That's a classic picture, man. I'll see overlay. That. I will that. overlay. I don't even know this when. photo yeah. into the vid into the uh, what, podcast what is that? episode. Thank God I'm wearing my glasses. So that's oh, Mike Bosley. That. There's, wow, there's, you guys are killing it right there. So what you'll notice in that photo, if you look under Miss, that's Magoo's in uh, Topeka. Okay. I think there was a gang shooting in the in the alley that night, and we had <laughs> to, it took us an hour to load out because the cops were there. But if you look at Mr. Magoo behind us, you'll notice mm-hmm. he has an interesting mustache. Every time we'd play there, I would take gaff tape and put that mustache <laughs> on Mr. Magoo, which is probably. I don't know. That's probably nice. Not. There you go. You can so, see yeah. that. So, so yeah, so played there a few that, times. yeah, because yeah, Prayer for Rain very much has an '80s vibe oh, to it. Yeah, it's got that whole U two. Yeah, you know. Yes, in in the course of your recording, it, delay guitar. What, and, what year was that? Ninety one when yeah. you recorded it and you shot the video in ninety one and. Mm-hmm. What what came out in August of ninety one is smells like Teen Spirit. Yeah, I believe. Yeah, mm-hmm. so everything yeah. just timing on that. <laughs> yeah, funny story. I was in I was in Nashville one night at a bar and um, was actually having a drink with. I was, um, I'm assuming this is like more recently than ninety one. Yeah, yeah. This is a few years back, but I was with um, Matthew Matthew Nelson um, of the Nelsons. Mm-hmm. And, oh, and the conversation. Oh, Brian Rice's favorite, one of Brian's favorite band. A great I, band. I, 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 I Very talented guy. I've the rain, seen him. I, yeah. I rediscovered After the Rain appeared on the Righteous Gemstones as a backing song, you know, in the third season, I think. And that's mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, I, I remember that song and I just got into it. So well, the, you were, you the were... conversation we had, and he was very, you know, very upfront about it. I mean, it's like, I was like, man, that band, that record was great. Great songs, everything. I said, you guys came out in 90 in 90 and you had, you know, go back and look at that. Look how that band was packaged. Look how they dressed. Mm -hmm. I said, man, he goes, buddy, we couldn't have come out at the, I said, if I said, if you guys would have came out in jeans and t-shirts and flannel and like singer songwriting guys and a little less polished with those songs, you would have killed it. And he goes, no, we know as soon as we hit and that record came out, Smells like Teen Spirit came right. out and all that stuff, you know, yeah. and you started seeing Pearl Jam and all that stuff like, mm-hmm. uh, well, 
you know. You know, it's pretty cool. You hung out with one of Ricky Nelson's sons, Kids. by the way. Let's, I, well, know. no, I remember I was listening because I got so immersed in the Nelson thing that I listened to one of their interviews and they were talking <laughs> about like, well, one, I don't know which, which of the twins was talking about it, but he contended that, you know, the, all the hair bands of the eighties got so expensive to produce that all the record execs are like, okay, these these guys are wanting like two million dollar advances to record their next album. But hey, here's these guys up in Seattle. They'll, who, we can get them who, like who, Kentucky. Who, we can get them a who, bucket who, of Kentucky Fried Chicken, who, and they'll do we a can record license for fifteen grand, <laughs> Boom. and and Just and amazing. and create this whole new thing. Sure. And that was kind of the input part of the. I don't know how accurate that is, but it makes sense that the record execs would be like, mm-hmm. okay, we can continue p- playing all these hair bands, millions of dollars. Oh, we could just license these these garage recordings for fifteen grand and do that and and make a better profit, and then all of a sudden that that uh, that synergy or whatever just kind of tied in. And you know, people say, "Hey, if you had a time machine, what would you do?" And some people are like, "I'd go, I'd go buy Apple, or I'd go back and I'd buy Google stock, or I'd mm-hmm. buy whatever." And I would go back, and I would. I would change, you know, I would get ahead of that curve. Like I would go mm, back and I would yeah. write and, um, you know, simplify, you know, heavy it up, do the thing. Sure. I mean, when you see right. what, like, you know, you look at a band like Weezer and what they did and how they've oh, done it. Man. And, right. you know, it's just like, that's the deal, man. I mean, that was, that's really cool. And it stands up. Mm-hmm. It's still there. You it's can, still there. There's, yeah, yeah. They, they still have. They just had a tour. How long did you play with Perpetual Change? Then, um, I don't know, two or three years. Okay, that's that's pretty good. Probably. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was like they they had. I mean, and joking aside, I mean, I think that uh, Pascarelli, Joe Pascarelli, was in the band mm-hmm. before me. He mm-hmm. came in after Bill, and then Joe was doing his own thing, and I came in, and then Michael Hennig came in. Um, of Platinum Rock, yeah, yeah, Platinum Rock Legends. Oh, okay. Michael Hennig came in. Yeah, that's how. Yeah, that's how I got connected with right my St. Louis. The yeah. entire St. Louis scene is the result of Michael Hennig having been somewhat connected to the Kansas City scene. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> you know, and then and then rightly so. I mean, Bill Bill came back and Jim came back and they did right. the and that's, yeah, yeah yeah they did the yeah. reunion and that's the way it should be and yeah. um I don't want to sound like a broken record like uh, and I'm not. And here's the thing. I'm not mailing it in, you know, as far as no. when I talk about people. But again, there's guys that, I mean, we're still friends. I mean, I was uh, joking with Bosley Texan today. I mean, well, I, my whole family goes to Andrew as a dentist. Mm-hmm. And I will say this on a microphone that I've played in a lot of bands with a lot of people. And Andrew Moore is one of the cleanest people human beings you'll ever meet in your life okay, like guy. the way he's lived his life from sure. he's the only guy i've ever played music with that i would let put his hands in my wife right. and my children's wow. mouths that says a lot <laughs> right there that says a lot no, that's that's, that's andrew totally. that's my yelp totally. review for andrew more <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. yeah and I, yeah, I i mentioned i went well, to high school well, with him so yeah, you, I mean, I've known him that well yeah long. you yeah. didn't what which was it did you when you were recording you had did he have you come in and play guitar or did you have him come in and play bass on one of your or Marianne's records? I seem to remember Mike, that yeah, you Mike came crossed, in and played yeah. bass on those first Marianne songs and um, came over and just did what he does. Mike just walks in, plugs in, yeah, and it sounds really good. Um, and we've done a couple of little acoustic things, him and I going out and yeah. doing things and having fun. And um, he's a guy. Those are guys I wish I could do more with. And obviously time and schedules are time and schedules. And, right. um, yeah. but if they called yeah. me and said, Hey, we got a show in two months and we don't have a guitar and whatever we got, it, we don't have a guitar. Well, that'd be something. Then be I would, I would just like study, yeah. study, study and, and show up and try and make it happen. Cause they're just, right. they're just good people to play with. Um, yeah. and so, so speaking, I've got a, I've got a little thing, uh, cause I texted Boz mm-hmm. and Andrew and so Boz. Wow. Does like, it have to do with firecrackers? Uh oh. Yeah. That's, that's, that's Andrew. <laughs> okay. All All right. Right. Let's, right. we'll, we'll set that aside. Cause I've got prayer for rain video. Table that. You were trespassing illegally. On a quarry. In a quarry, hid behind rocks and, and with your guitars mm-hmm. every time the cops would patrol the spot. And you did that for two to three hours. Yeah. And you used a ghetto blaster for the audio to hear the track while you recorded. Mm-hmm. I, I think Andrew has that on v- v- I've um, got I've got it in a... You, you need I've to digitize that. You need to digitize that and, have, and, and release that right. unto yeah. the world. Because yeah. I want to see that video. Oh, you know what I have on video is... We we played a like a big convention, like a 
political convention or something. They wanted a rock band. So we went over to Memorial Hall or Municipal Water Tour or whatever, and we played this thing. We played like, it was me, Andrew, Mike, and, and Hartnett, Matt Hartnett. And uh, we played like four or five songs. But the headliner of the whole deal was Michael McDonald from the Doobie Brothers. And the whole day, so he's going to come in and he's going to just <clears throat> play piano and do some solo stuff. So the whole day we're sound checking. I'm going... <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm like just goofing off. And, Andy, and, we're all like, oh. and so we're sound checking. This guy comes in and goes... Uh, could you guys hang out? Mr. McDonald's coming in from the airport and he'd like to speak to you. And Andrew's like, damn it, Michael's Waldo. That's what he called me. He said, damn it, Waldo. They heard you, they heard you making fun of him. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, probably. And um, <laughs> so Michael McDonald shows up and he lists, we're just kind of jacking around and he goes, hey, you know, I was going to just play these acoustic songs on piano, but I'd like to do something full band. Do you guys know the song Taking It to the Streets and Hand to God? Andrew Moore goes, no. <laughs> it's like, man, lie. Just say, yeah, oh, it's a, yeah. We're huge Doobie fans. So we all sat around the piano with Michael. We worked out harmonies. We worked out the chord progressions. And we played it. Wow. And I've got it on this, some tape somewhere. And I've got to digitize it. And how like, old were you at that? How old were you? Oh, we were, it's 90. It so was, it was 20 something. When was Clinton elected? Right. It, was, it was all for that. Okay. It was like 92. Yeah. So I don't know. I wow. was 20. Dang, but, um, dog. Yeah, and it's, I guarantee you, I'm just like, Hartnett killed it. Like, he was so good at what he did, and I was kind of hacking my way through, and I'm just posing. So it's like, I just want to watch that video, but I know that I'm not They good. were all there for Michael McDonald anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. Know. Yeah. All that the... was one of the uh, suggestions that Andrew had. Asked okay. him about that uh, for a fundraiser. Ended up playing Take It to the Streets with him, and... Uh, Something about your trip to L.A. when you didn't shower for several days. Well, I didn't shower for the ride out there. I was driving. <laughs> and plus, I, I was... Here's the thing. I was I was the guy who had a sense of the market and an understanding. Grunge was there. there they go. didn't know it. Mm -hmm. I'm the one who didn't shower. Yeah. I was ready. <laughs> and was uh, right and they, they threw me in a shower and cleaned me up, and we were well, back well, to 80s pop again. What about getting so. kicked out of El Pollo Loco in L.A.? Um, we did try and interview the staff at El Pollo Loco. Uh, that's on video as well. Interview. We wanted to know more about their, their brand. Um, there was an El Pollo Loco on every corner. Yeah, and, by um, that name. There's still a no. Yeah, on El Pollo, the crazy chicken. Yeah, the crazy chicken. Isn't there one here in Kansas City? No. I feel like there's, no. there's, well, a, if there's it, a Pollo or something. In, ask yeah. Mike Bosley. He'll know. I think he's still got a punch card. Yeah, that was definitely but, a California <laughs> thing. It was, yeah. We did get asked to leave. So. In Spanish, I'm sure. Probably. What else? What else you got? Come on. Don't, don't I'm, leave I'm us skimming. hanging. I'm skimming. Oh, you're waiting on me. You don't want to talk about the black cats, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, the firecracker. The fireworks. Firecrackers. Yeah, firecrackers. Right. What, what so you we were playing. Ask them about the firecrackers. We were playing a bar. And in, is this, this is here in Kansas City and not L.A. Yeah, okay. up here in Kansas we're City. We're bringing it back to Kansas City for everybody. Back in Kansas City. We're playing a bar up north Kansas City. And this is circa early 90s. Yeah, yeah. In perpetual change. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, I I don't know why, but I used to light incense on my side of the stage, so I always had something burning. And um, I opened up my guitar case to get something mid-set, mid and there was a pack of, like a 12-pack of black cats. Because why wouldn't you, right? <laughs> and my... But this my, wasn't for Fourth of July. This was they no, were just there. Just in my guitar case because you're 20 and things happen. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought it would be in the moment. I thought it would be a great idea <laughs> to light them. Oh, and this yeah. is wood floors, wood walls. You know, you can imagine. And I just reach over, light these off incense, and I tossed them back behind Andrew. <laughs> and he has no idea until oh, they man. started going off. Oh my gosh. And have you ever seen Andrew Moore like insanely angry? I've heard this. I've heard. I've heard a part of the story. Yeah, I remember somebody. It's telling, the maddest. I've never like seen him like that. <laughs> like, <laughs> like he had a look on his face. And he had flashbacks of Mr. Magoo's and. Remember when you remember when you were a kid where? and your dad would have that look and you didn't want that look. I, Andrew had that look. <laughs> 
And I don't know why I thought that mm-hmm. just in the time of this, hey, it'd mm-hmm. be really good ideas to light fireworks <laughs> and throw them behind the drummer in the middle of the set in Applebee's or wherever. Yeah. Like, what about the know. owner? Was the owner upset? It's, was it, Andrew the only one? I was upset? not concerned about the owner. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, I was North concerned Kansas about City, my God boss. Sakes. My boss, the drummer. Yes, doctor, <laughs> doctor Andrew Moore. Um, that's great. Very nice. So, um, what? what what happened after Perpetual Change? Who'd you play with next? So Perpetual Change, you know, when I was done with that, um, I got, I got, I met a woman that I fell in love with, dated for a couple months, got engaged. Six months later, got married on the honeymoon. It was like, hey, we should have kids. So we're we're yeah. celebrating our thirtieth anniversary, May twenty seventh. Hey, congrats! Right. Whoa, uh, that's right around the corner. Yeah, March twenty seventh was our son's twenty ninth. So mm-hmm. do math. Oh, I didn't know and, he was uh, that good. He was coming math. along though. Yeah, he's he keeps getting older, <laughs> and. Um, because I, if I shot Marianne's senior photos in 2015, that's putting her up at 26. She just turned 26. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I started writing songs. You know, I got family, I got kids, I start writing songs. I, um, I love Mellencamp and Springsteen and Brian Adams. A friend of mine's in L.A. doing music supervision for films. I go out there, introduce me to publishers playing songs for him the guy's like yeah you know man, this isn't pop anymore you're country i'm like well no, i can't be country country's not cool he goes no nah, really you're country go see this guy in nashville so i go down to nashville and i have a couple meetings and they're like yeah the songs are cool and you got to keep writing but you don't sound country go find a country singer so i come home i go to tanner's because they have a karaoke and uh-huh. i'm watching and this guy wins karaoke and singing some garth brooks song or something like that I'm like damn that guy sounds country so i go up to him and i said hey you should come sing these songs. Here's a cassette. Learn them. Come over to my house. And I was in the basement program, a drum machine, playing bass, playing guitar, just whatever. He comes over, sings them. I'm sitting at, at my job one day, and this guy comes in, and he works for Chris Fritz. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure. like, I'm like, hey, would you give Chris Fritz a tape? And so I hand him this tape, and I'm like, give him this tape. And I don't even know what I'm doing, but uh, you guys do a lot of country shows out there at Sandstone, and. Uh, mm-hmm. Two or three weeks later, I get a phone call. And the guy's like, hey, this is Chris Fritz. I'm like, oh, okay. He goes, I got your tape. I like your band. Uh, can you guys play? And I forget the date, but he's like, are you guys available July, something, something? I'm like, yes. <laughs> and now remember, this band is me on a drum machine bass. You know, <laughs> I said, yeah, what's up? He goes, well, we got Tracy Bird and Tracy Lawrence coming out to Sandstone. Okay. And I need a uh, support act to play until the sun goes down. So I need 45 minutes. I'm like, yeah, no problem. He goes, what's the name of your band? I go, I'm dumb. I'll call you back. So <laughs> I call all my buddies. So I call Scott Colson, drummer. Mm-hmm. I call Bosley, bass. Um, call a couple other guys. I'm like, hey, we're going to play at Sandstone. Oh, cool. What are we doing? Country. No way. No, come on, come on. <laughs> what is The songs are kind of rock and roll, but they're kind of country. And um, I got a singer. So I call the singer. I'm like, hey, man, those songs. I said, let's play a show. He goes, well, where are we playing? I go, Sandstone. <laughs> he goes, in the parking lot? Right. I'm like, no, no, no. We're going to be on the stage and everything. He goes, well, what are we? it's going to be fine. So he, What was this guy's name? Steve Duvall. Uh-huh. Um, so we uh, go out there and we open up for Tracy Bird and Tracy Lawrence. You put it all together. They all, what year got was all? this? At six weeks. And what year was this? Uh, 97. Hmm. Called the band. I go home. I'm looking through records, trying to find inspiration for a name. I'm going through... Gin Blossoms, Springsteen, Brian Alden, County Crows, The Rain Kings, or The Rain King. I'm like, damn it, that's the name of the band. So I call them, the, the band's called The Rain Kings. Oh, that's really cool. So we had this band, and we ended up opening for Toby Keith, Dixie Chicks. Yeah. Every, I mean, the list wow. is really cool, and played some great shows. Played Sandstone like three or four times. Toured, you know, did Keith Urban, you know, played the Beaumont with Urban a couple times wow. and um, went down, had a, a kind of a development like deal and wrote some songs. And it just, you know, like, like oftentimes it, it doesn't happen. And um, we just had a blast. So got out of that, did some cover band stuff with my buddies for a while, um, playing 80s tunes, you know, just playing, well, yeah. playing Barley's and playing, so, yeah, you know. Buck- where you? What made you decide on Buck Rogers as the name of your? Um, you had a band called Buck Rogers. So that's a whole other story. Um, <laughs> I just came up with a, a, a name for an '80s cover band. I thought Buck Rogers was cool. Yeah. And then I morphed back into writing some more country stuff and doing some things and work with Marianne. And one of my buddies in Nashville was like, 
is your, he called me, he was talking, he's like, oh well, yeah, and you know Buck, and I'm like, no, no, that's just my Instagram handle. He goes, well, that's a really cool name, because it's like Buck Owens and Kenny Rogers. I'm like, yeah, fine, <laughs> sticks. So we called it Buck Rogers. And then Mary Ann was like, hey, I can sing. I'm like, yes, and you're so much better. And it's more fun to do this. And I get to play music with my daughter, which is really cool. So we moved on to Mary Ann's deal in like, what, 2015, 16-ish. Yeah, right. And um, just kept on doing it. And I still write. You know, I'm writing on the 15th. I got a guy in Nashville. His name's uh, Ben Miller. We write. Um, yeah, ben you told me the, that there's like a, what's it called? A writer's row or something in Nashville, like a street full of houses where you just. Well, that, yeah. I mean, there's, you got music row, which is music the music row, business, yeah. but like Ben is the musical director for a guy named Trey Lewis, who mm-hmm. had the, who just signed a record deal. Trey's phenomenal. He had the largest um, streamed independent cut a few years ago with a song called Dicked Down in Dallas. Uh, Google it. Seven million, oh, I've, eight million I've, streams. I hate heard, to live through that song. Yeah, I've heard uh, this. I've heard of it. I don't yeah. think I've actually listened to it. Give it, a, give it a spin. And uh, <laughs> my friend <laughs> Ben, <laughs> Ben is his uh, musical director, and Ben owns a publishing company, and we write every month or so. And um, we've written some stuff that we like, and it's kind of pitching around Nashville. Mm-hmm. So I stay in that. I've got a friend, Adam Box, who's the drummer for a band called Brothers Osborne. Adam and I do some things Dang, you are plugged um, in still bro. but but i'm the weakest link in the whole room you place himself so, down so well yeah Brian. You no know, it's like i know <laughs> i know i'm there i, I know i bring good bourbon and that's how oh, i get in the oh, door that's so, how, right, no, let me tell right. you let me tell you i remember you had me come out and get some behind the scenes footage for marianne's um i think it was the stronger song was it stronger no surrender no surrender yeah. no surrender um and all the way out in Lone Jack, I think, or somehow toward that yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. And that studio out toward Lone Jack, wow. and I was just getting behind the scenes footage, and you were like coaching Marianne on how to sing something, and she's already got a great voice herself. But to be able to kind of coach her and like sing the note yourself equally as good, which you do, you did this thing like, no, no, no you want to do it like, da, 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 da. and you just hit the note, and just like, and I'm like, wow. and I was just, I just specifically remember that moment Pitch watching perfect. you do that. And it's like, yeah, that's, yeah. So you're kind, you know, when you, when you downplay yourself, I, I laugh cause I remember that moment. Cause that really st- stuck out to me. I mean, it's a very, very, you're never gonna, you're never gonna think of yourself. You know, it's like, because when you, you grow up and you're watching, you know, you, I didn't practice playing guitar. So I was never going to be Eddie, but I loved listening to Eddie mm-hmm. and just, was everything and you know i was never gonna sing like some of these guys but you do your best and um i mean that's the thing is you just it's a it's like people say ah you know i'll play guitar but i'm not good it's like nobody cares just play um it's like you know i know a lot of people say uh, i you know, go out and spend fifty dollars to play around a round of golf and shoot 110 but it's just enjoy it so i mean my advice is like i've got friends that are 50 years old and they're like well yeah, you know, I don't know about playing guitar. I, I always wanted to play an instrument. It's like, then buy an instrument and go on YouTube yeah. and play guitar. Right. Well, but if I'm not good, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Do you yeah. do you enjoy doing it? And that's, that's sort of like me with you know, drums. It took me a long time. Sp- I talked yeah. I talked to Gogo for years about taking drum lessons, and then finally I just decided to follow through. For sure. You know, and I got in a little, you know, we just need for thing. you to actually play with a band. Maybe you oh, could uh, right. help us no, out with that sometime. No, no, just don't that. take your acoustic guitar to a party <laughs> and have firecrackers. Uh, okay, in well, the that too. What can you tell case. me about a water winger? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is it? What are we talking about? This is one of Mike Bosley's. <laughs> this is one of Mike Bosley's stories. Oh it starts with Water Winger. You hit this one then, deep. That's that's so, the text. Oh, he goes into lot. the story. Like, but type maybe I'll there. let you like work My work gosh. your way because the way your reaction shows you know exactly what he's talking about. Did he type all of that or did he voice text? It's it? like two whole like I think one he hand typed. I think he hand typed. Two paragraphs long. I think he hand typed. I'll, I'll oh overlay this in the video. Bosley, get a hobby. <laughs> You know, you could have, you had I me at Water Winger. I think he ta- texted so. me. I texted him like yesterday morning or Monday morning, and within okay. 30 minutes, that's Water Winger. Like, look, he did, there's a whole like thing of, oh, let me get this. Well, that, and hear then, about it. Yeah, let's anyway, go into so it. Anyway, so Water Winger. What is it? Okay, so we had this, <laughs> we had this contraption. 
and I don't know what they call them now, but one guy holds each end. It's a huge like catapult or rubber band. And in the middle is a thing and you put a water balloon in it and you pull it all the way back and yes. you can shoot a water balloon like a hundred yards. Okay? You wing it. <laughs> it's called a water winger. So we would get in my God, if Andrew Moore's parents are listening to this, he'll, he'll, they'll try and ground him. I don't know if there's a, I don't know if there's a statute of limitations in the Moore household. I think that Janelle still has some reach. Um, so I'm sorry, Andrew, if your mom hears this and knows you weren't a complete angel. So the water winger, we would have rehearsal. Then we would fill up 15, 20 water balloons, put them in a, a cooler. And we would drive to the nearby tennis courts. So the, the, the proper ones to go to were 87th Street between Lackman and oh, Flum. Okay. Right there by the yes. pool. Yes, Cause, sure. Because you, exactly. you got the mm-hmm. tennis courts, you got the lights down on yeah. them, and you got the woods around them. Right. But this night, we went to Johnson Drive right across the street from St. Joseph Church okay. in the park. Okay. The old... Uh, Old Shawnee Town yeah, area, yeah. right? So there's tennis courts there, and north of there was kind of a field parking lot area, about 50 yards, 100 yards out. So you can envision this it's eight, nine o'clock at night, it's dark, and there's lights. And if you can put yourself on a tennis court, the lights are shining in, so you can't see out past them, right? So we're going there, we got all the water balloons, we got the winger, and <laughs> <laughs> Andrew. Andrew says, yeah, yeah, we've hit people before. We've done this. We've done that. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Okay, let's go do it. <laughs> so, I don't know. so I pull this first one back. And Andrew and Mike, you know, they're holding each in and I'm back. And these guys are playing tennis and boom, I just let it go. <laughs> I'll never forget. Andrew says, oh, that's, that's online. Oh, that's... And Mike's like, that's looking pretty good. <laughs> and this poor guy, you know, oh, goes to serve and... It hits him like on the back of the thigh. Oh. And I've never been struck with a water balloon from 100 yards no. out on the back yeah. of the bare hey. thigh. But it sounds, it's, I think we heard it. Good leave a mark. And we, the guy drops his racket. It goes to a knee. We dive back into the car. We're driving <laughs> off. And Andrew's freaking out. I'm like, oh my. He goes, you hit him. You hit him. I can't believe it. I go, Andrew. The, the quote Andrew, is. Andrew. Holy shit, you nailed him. <laughs> Holy oh, shit, you nailed him. That's the quote. And I go, well, you guys, you guys have hit people before. And he goes, no, we haven't. I was just kidding. We've never hit anybody. This is, you know, this we just... The cleanest guy in uh, yeah. Johnson County. In New yeah, he um, never would have got into dental school if they knew that story. Oh, no shit. Oh, there you go. Mm-hmm. But that's the story of uh, the winger. Nice, nice. I hope that yeah, gentleman yeah. John's can walk like, I, still. Wait, I thought you guys hit. I thought you hit guys all the time. Hell no, we never hit anyone. <laughs> Real story. Oh man, that's great. Way to go. Way to disable somebody. And then you would throw no. kisses, lick it up into the set randomly just to be stupid. And trust, it t- trust me, in Topeka, it went over. <laughs> oh no, yeah. Um, yeah. At Mr. Magoo's? No, one, we were playing Magoo's <laughs> one time, and there were some biker folk in there, and um, there was a woman who was very physically able to kick everyone's ass in the bar, and she was yelling at Mike about playing April Wine. Hmm. And she said, play some April Wine. Okay. You know, and Mike goes, oh, you mean like Hair of the Dog and, and uh, Love Hurts and all? And she's like, yeah, play it. And he goes... Oh, I love playing that stuff. But ever since John joined the band, we don't do it anymore because he hates April wine. <laughs> <laughs> so for the next half hour, I had uh, this woman yeah. calling me everything. But, hey, uh, you know, I've had that happen to me at a grinders, uh, Stonewall grinders. <laughs> um, so, the, you know, playing with perpetual change sounds like it's a detriment to your health. I am. Or it was a detriment to your health. You know, then. you have to, you have to appreciate the ebbs and flows of life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're, they're, I mean, great guys, good stories. I mean, sure. So, yeah. I mean, now that's, that's great. Hats up to that's Andrew great. and Mike for yeah. sending right. me, Kicking me out of the band. Guys. <laughs> for sending me some fodder to, uh, maybe we should interview them one time. I, I, like, I, I said, Hey, maybe we 
should interview you, Boz. Oh, no, no, no. Nobody wants to hear my bullshit. I'm like, okay, that was, I think that was his tactful way of turning it down without saying no. We don't have that much. No, time. he's right. <laughs> Okay. But yeah, I think that's the most of the stories from from that they suggested. The yeah. firecrackers, the the video and and of course the Michael McDonald story and the uh the water winger were the major ones yeah. they recommended that we bring up. But um what else do we I mean we, here's the thing. You're gonna play music, right? So there's a certain there there's people that get involved in it, right? Mm-hmm. And um yeah, you're gonna have you're gonna have you're gonna have good times. I've so always, fun. I've always felt like what you guys have, and I think I said this in the Brad, the unreleased Brad Gaddy interview that Shannon is uh, <laughs> forbidding me from releasing because right. yeah. he hit. Maybe I think that was the night. He, that's the night club. Shannon. That's the night Shannon decided that he's not a whiskey guy. Yes, and he yeah, doesn't want yeah, that released to the world it for me. But uh, yeah. no, I was like that. You guys have such a history that goes back decades. Like you can see all those guys you just talked about and like have this connection and still, you know, whereas, you know, I grew up and all my childhood friends have just scattered to the winds, Sure, you know, and, and we don't have that connection anymore. We don't, you know, they, they, everybody's gone on to their lives. Some I don't talk to simply we had a falling out. Other people just like went in different directions, but you guys, all, all the musicians in Kansas city. And this is what appeals to me so much about this podcast yeah. is you still live in Kansas City. You still see each other, and you still have that mm-hmm. common history together, which I find yeah, they wouldn't very... take us anywhere else. <laughs> <laughs> which I so... find very fascinating. Which I find it, you know, there's pretty um, cool. You know, you, I mean, you're right. It's like, um, and, and like, so you talk about Brad and um, you know Larry. And the, I mean, those guys in the zeros. It's mm-hmm. like um, I run into them every once in a while. Uh, they don't know me from squat. And every time I see them, they're just good people. Did you I have mean, you I, ever seen them? You remember the your big things? I've never seen the zeros play. I'm like, how could you? Yeah, not yeah, seen, yeah. I saw them. Did at, you finally um, see them? You know, I don't go anywhere. Yeah. I don't go out. Yeah. Um, but I did see them at uh, at the the Kansas City Zoo. Jazz Zoo. Yes, Jazzy. it was an event. They were just weren't randomly playing in yeah. the in the Africa section. Yeah. But um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was it was Jazz Zoo, and it was really hot. I sat there and watched them and. You know, I, in fact, I and, sent, I sent, and Hartnett was probably doing the sound for them that night too. I mean, they're so good, and I love all that music. In fact, uh, the promise you posted a video of it, and yeah. I tagged a friend of mine yeah. in Nashville, Great Angela. Song. Oh, is that who that was? Okay. She's married to the lead singer from Wedding Room. Oh, is that why? I was wow. wondering, like, who? Did, why did you tag this random person? That's why. In That's, in the yeah. okay, and you are connected. Her husband. Oh, I'm not. I, no, I'm just. Gosh. No, yeah, the trick is. Talk to everybody. Yeah, just talk right. to everybody and try you're and be right. nice. I mean, exactly. like I said, I mean, I was backstage at a jam one time and Larry's there and we were laughing our asses off about nothing. And then Curtis <laughs> chimes in. You got Curtis Anderson walks in and you got, <laughs> you know, I didn't even want to play guitar. It was just hanging out and talking to those guys. And I would rather, I would rather go have coffee with Curtis Anderson, right? Mm-hmm. Or with Larry or, um, you know, I meet with some of these guys every once in a while and just to, Oh, um, you know, there's some guys in Kansas City. Yeah, there's some phenomenal musicians there in Kansas are. City that tour. Yeah. And you know, yeah. Donovan White. Mm-hmm. You know Donovan. Donovan no. was in Vertical Horizon for like ten oh, years. Wow. I know okay. that one of Noe's guitar yeah. players toured with Florida Georgia Line. Oh yeah, yeah. He was the, one of their guitar. Well, a couple guys out of KC. Were yeah. the, and Dan Weller's still. Dan Weller. Yeah, that's who I'm talking. Dan's yeah. there, and then um, uh, Tyler Chirelli. Chirelli. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, nobody's gonna see this, but um, I'm kidding. <laughs> You're right. Eight no. people will yeah. see this. Yeah. Hey, right. Thirteen. Hopefully, bro. Tyler's not one of 13. them. Thirteen. But um, Donovan, um, <laughs> we're up to thirty-nine subscribers on Donovan's YouTube. in Vertical Horizon. When the gin blossoms are down, a guy, whether it's one of the guitar players or the bass player, they call Donovan. He goes out with them. <laughs> um, he's tours with David Cook. He tours with. Um, I mean, and he's right here in KC, and mm-hmm. he's just a phenomenal guy. He was like. Um, you know, the new Smath Mouse singer, they went with the guy they got now. He was the second option. I mean, he, and he's right here in KC. Yeah. You know, Ty Tabor from King's X lives here in Kansas yeah, City. Yeah. There's wow, just people yeah. here, and oh. most of them move in the shadows. Um, you got Jimmy Allen, who wrote all the first record, really, of Puddle of Mud, you know, all that stuff, and then yeah, left I the know. band. Yeah, one of Jimmy the- lives up north, and he's 
holy shit, I mean, I mean, he's amazing. So, I mean, there's there's a lot here in KC. You got that right. And you guys want to talk yeah. about our freaking Bruce Springsteen no, cover. Well, yeah. you know, we really want to talk about you, and you've, well, you've done a lot, man. You've well, been around. Well, well I've been I've been fortunate to meet a lot of great people. Yeah. And and you know just introduce myself and talk and listen um, and have conversations with, and I just think I've been really really blessed i got a great family well yeah well let's um, talk KC. about a little bit about your daily life how much you want to get into what you're doing today oh. as your day as, as your day job so to speak i know you used to be in the auto uh, industry space but i don't think you are anymore no no we're um I, I, by talking to people uh, and introducing myself to people i ended up meeting some guys that had a technology to simplify this they had a technology that will clean water and by that, I mean, you know, it's uh, compared to everything that's out there in the market now. It has the smallest physical footprint, the smallest carbon footprint, uh, the small, the lowest cost, uh, throughput, effectiveness. And, and we've got several different verticals we're working on. And this is something and you've been working on almost, I mean, even longer, than, years now. Even longer yeah. than the Bruce Springsteen yeah, yeah. tribute. All I had to do was find a sax player for Bruce. And now I got, you yeah, know, yeah. But, but one thing we're doing, and this is important, and um, if you Google PFAS, PFAS is how it's pronounced, mm-hmm. and it's short for polyfluoroalkyl, and that is a man-made molecule that is a fluorinated molecule, man-made. DuPont uh, chemical companies came up with these things so that your pans don't stick, so that the house paint lasts longer on the side of your house, so that your ski wax makes your skis go faster. But that forever molecule... Uh, stays forever. That's why they call it. It stays in the water. It stays in your body. And it that, settles. On the face of it, that sounds like a bad thing, potentially. It's terrible. It's cancer-causing. It's, sure. I mean, if you Google it, if you watch the movie Blackwater uh, with Mark Ruffalo, real stories, uh, 3M just lost a $13 billion lawsuit on the East Coast for releasing these chemicals into the rivers. The military has 714 active bases that have groundwater contamination because they used what's called AFFF, which is aqueous film forming foam. It's the, they use those molecules to create a film on top of the foam, that white foam they'd spray, because it would suck the oxygen out, put the fire out. They hose it off into the grass, goes down to the groundwater. So you hear the people say, oh, Camp Lejeune, you know, it's real. Um, so there's our tech, our technology will strip all that out of the water. Um, so we're, we're doing some things. We're working with the military. We're working with the mercury cleanup foundation in California to treat the mercury contamination from the old mining, um, you know, areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're working with produced water in the oil fields to treat the water that comes out of the oil well Mm -hmm. that is useless unless you treat it. And we're working with a group in California to treat 6 billion gallons a year for the farmers. So So, how close is this up to, I guess what the freight term is, a scalability? Is that, is that, is that a factor in what you're doing? Yeah, we're there. We've got, I mean, we're there, we've got manufacturing set up and it's a, it's a, you know, if we, we launch a 30 unit project in California. We can be, we can and, be set up in six and months. And so what's so. your position? You're, are you like in sales? Or are you just like a, an advisor? It's funny. Um, went in as just an advisor and trying to help commercialize consultant. I guess and and the... then ended up, uh, now I'm a, a partner and we're all in this five guys and we're all swinging and ducking and everybody's got, you know, something they bring to the table. And mine is trying to build a culture and sell it and, have conversations. I'm giving a, I'm speaking at a water conference for Kansas end of April. Um, Mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've got letters of support from Senator Moran, Senator Marshall, Mm -hmm. Congressman Turner, Congressman Nexus, Congressman Davids, Lieutenant Governor Toland, who Mm -hmm. have, you know, looked into the tech their teams have understand what we're doing for Kansas. You know, Mm -hmm. we're, we're dealing with Kansas state university, Mm -hmm. uh, to ride shotgun on these things and, and verify the technology from a PhD standpoint. We've had third party labs come in and write white papers. It's, um, yeah, it's a 30 foot trailer that you can power with the sun and strip these chemicals out. Uh, to non-detect at 10 to 200 gallons a minute. And it takes that compound that you described in the water and removes it to make it safe to use to 
to even drink. Sure. So we are, we ran a pilot in Salina, Kansas, uh, Schilling air force base was in Salina. Mm-hmm. They left, they left the land for the airport authority and for Kansas state university, put a campus there and the public schools in the city. And then after the airport, or the air force was gone, they realized, Hey, you have left a 50 acre contaminated plume under the ground that has this PFAS in it. So, the Salina entities litigated against the Department of Defense and won a $70 million judgment to clean it up. So our technology, we're not there yet. We've done our pilot, and we're in the running to be the technology that cleans us up. We, we pumped 140,000 gallons of water out of the ground that is contaminated with the cancerous PFAS. Yeah, PFAS. And we treated it to non-detect, which means we're getting really technical. This This... Has taken a turn, but no, no this, this is so great, this, man. So this is what real, what so. the EPA has suggested for drinking water standards is four parts per per trillion PPT, four parts per trillion or less PFAS. Meaning, for every trillion molecules of H two O, you can have four PFAS molecules. The groundwater in Salina is one hundred and forty plus parts per trillion PFAS. We treated it, and we took it down to non-detect, which meant it was less than two. We then had the frack tank full of water, and we showed it the results to the city, and this city said, release it into our storm sewers. So it went from $70 million cancer's plume to, sure, put it in the sewers, we're good. So where does that, where does the PFAS go? So it's, we, we have stored it, we have a... You separate it out, but where, it's got to go somewhere. We dump it in Missouri. I'm kidding. <laughs> Jerry's. Uh, Jerry's bathroom. We just, sorry. It's, uh, there's a resin tower. Mm-hmm. There's ion exchange resins that are specially formulated to trap this contaminant. Our technology sits before that, and it's we're just going to call it a magic box. And what mm-hmm. we've done is we've, we've figured out a way to move the water in a way that excites the positive and negative ions, right? In water, there's positive and negative energy. If you take a glass of water and you put an inanimate object in the middle of it, the negative ions will attract to that inanimate object. They'll form a thin layer around it. And then there's positive. And if you take a wire and you put one into the negatives and one of the positives, you can power a small LED light bulb, okay? So you look at a pond, it's dead looking, right? There's stuff growing in it. You look at a brook, it's clean, right? Because that water's moving. Mm-hmm. And there's, yeah. there's negative ions on those rocks in the bottom, mm-hmm. and it's all passing through, and it's self-cleaning. You go to the bathroom in a stream, eight, nine, ten miles down the way, they can't tell that you went to the bathroom because it self-cleans it out of there, right? Mm-hmm. So we've taken ten miles of stream, and we've shortened it into a box. So we get that water excited, if you will. Mm -hmm. And then anything that's not H2O actually kind of expands. So we enhance what's happening in the resin tower. So they become more effective and we actually expand the life of the filter media so that it's going to save money. And this is all run with a, with a pump. You can, again, put some solar up and power it and go. Well, I have to say you explained this very good way, very right. well, very concisely. Yeah, it's like a science class yeah. all of a sudden. But it's not over our heads. It's like uh, so I can imagine your position is to sit down with people and really like and talk about yeah, this. You and did and a good job. you know, I've met some again, now you start meeting people and you start having conversations. And man, there's people that have just done you know, we're we're talking to a guy out in California and he's trying to decarbonize the oil fields in California. Because mm-hmm. Oil makes a lot of money in California, and they'll tell you they don't like oil, but they sure like the money. <laughs> so he's going to install solar installations so that the pumps or their 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 uh, oil wells all run off solar power. And then since ours are so low, you can tag them on there for almost nothing. You can treat all that produced water. California loses about 65 billion gallons of water a oh, year hey, from oil yeah. production. Mm-hmm. And they can't even afford to lose it. So w- this, this one project we're looking at would treat between six and six and a half billion gallons of water a year that we would then sell to the local water bank, which would be distributed to 
cashew farmers, almond farmers, date farmers, mm-hmm. people who are in yeah. five years will be out of sure. business. Exactly. Yeah, the if valley. they can't water yeah. their crops. Right? Was, yeah. we're, we're actually, the, the projects we're looking at are east of Bakersfield. Mm-hmm. So, okay. Yeah. Fresno. Mm-hmm. East of Bakersfield. I don't, I. Orange County. Orange east County. of Bakersfield, which means I'll get There's, to go to Dwight Yoakam's place when I'm out there. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, is it what called? I was is it, it's not Simi it's Valley, the, but the, the valley, like I that, that part Simi of California valley, where it's, it's, Fresno is uh, up to mm, Sacramento, and that and that that's like northern. A, it's east of Bakersfield. Okay, all right. <laughs> it's know. all flat. It, it just goes. You go through the pass, and then it's flat after Bakersfield. And here's okay. the thing: east of Bakersfield is one thing; west is a completely different water because the groundwater is so brackish because of the seawater, mm-hmm. and the and, and we can't do seawater. It's the only thing. we can strip. We've also got a fantastic idea for a reality television show that we're working on. We'll save that for another cast. Oh, breaking <laughs> um, news. But we can go to Flint, Michigan. We can pull the medals out. Mm-hmm. Oh, hey. It's, it's easy. That's See, a lay down. You know, it's, uh, we can go to right. Camp Lejeune. We can go to yeah. any household name. Uh, Hinkley, California, where Aaron Brockovich went years ago. Mm-hmm. Made sure. a, made, sure. did a lot of, brought a lot of awareness. It still has hexavalent chrome. Um, oh, our technology gosh. also raises the pH of the stream. Now, so we turn hexavalent into trivalent chrome. I don't believe you've mentioned the name of your company. Uh, you Flotration. F-L-O-T-R-A-T-I-O-N. Okay. Flotration.com. And, 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 okay. God All right. bless yeah. Flotration, bro. I hope that... Flotration.com. And, and, you know, it's I mean, called it, Tech it H2O. Take, I don't know if that's the name. I will sticks, but, overlay yeah. the... Te- uh, yeah, the, the text go. onto the flowtration.com. Yeah, that's great. That's that's great stuff that you guys so, are doing. Obviously. But it's it's something. And then we're working. We've got a meeting next week with some some people that work in developing countries. And mm-hmm. you look at Philippines, Bermuda, El Salvador, Ghana. Um, you know, there's just there's Guyana. There's yeah. lists and lists and lists. And they have uh, they got a water issue, right? And in and there you pay you know in California you pay three thousand dollars for a acre foot of water, and in the Bermudas it's thirty grand for an acre foot of water. Yeah. So, right. right. And water is you know if you water's is, life is is, is oh, do, do you have anything in the works to address the salt water issue that you mentioned that you can't is that just not, is that beyond the it's ability just, of your yeah desalination there's tech out there that works just fine for desal okay and um, we'll let them have it. But it's, yeah. you know, let's go into western Kansas where the aquifer is trashed with runoff from nitrates, phosphates, from mm-hmm. all the uh, fertilization of the fields. We can strip all that out of those wells. Um, we, have, we have analytics on a stream in the Midwest, and I will not disclose where it is, but it is south of a... It's Mr. Magoo's in Topeka. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it's that. Su- it's <laughs> south of a military base, and it's the stream is 6,800 parts per trillion PFAS. Oh, my gosh. And it's flowing through farmer's lands. Jesus, and, and that's going um, right into everything. We've got analytics on it. We're having conversations with the state and the military about just doing a pilot. But it's, no, I would not drink the water near a military base, and I would not mm. drink the water at Magoo's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, there you go. Sorry. I, I think uh, I think we maybe dis- I think we may have won an award for this podcast just from this conversation <laughs> right here, Brian. Yes, I'm, I'm trying. Think we covered all the major bits. Yeah, I mean, no, definitely great, great. Um, so okay, let's get back. What's the next show you're doing with? Oh, with, um, um, Thunder May. Road? We're doing uh, May 17th at a really cool venue in the West Bottoms called Lemonade Park. Yeah, never been there, but um, we will that's be near there, the yeah. Golden Ox. Uh, yeah, okay. it's east, I think. It's on the other it's side of 12th right, Street, right? right? Kemper Arena. Or yeah, it's adjacent, or it's adjacent to yeah. Kemper Arena, or now hy Arena. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so it's Kemper over there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Formerly, formerly Kemper Arena, but yeah, it's sure. basically Caddy yeah. Corner. Sure. Well, I promise not to be dancing at this show. Um, you can dance Like I did at the Aztec when I got pulled into that. By one. by a taken woman whose I jealous know. boyfriend hey, gave I you stink know eye. You know what? Look, it wasn't through no fault of your own. I didn't do nothing. I'm I'm a trained dancer anyway. So <laughs> by trade, now I'm not. I'm kidding about that. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank John Michaels. Thanks. That's a good time. Yeah, thank for you. sitting down thank with you us. So much, man. For tr- great you know, stuff. You know, definitely, definitely enjoyed it. Great stories, great storyteller. We really appreciate this. Thanks, man. You sitting yeah. down and 
And uh, Thunder Road. We're looking forward to the go. next show with Thunder Road. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate right. the time. Guys. Good night, everybody. Have a good one. Thanks. Right. What a great crowd. <laughs>